This may just be the best UPS I have ever purchased, and it's not from any of the usual companies like Cyber Power, APC, or Triplight. This one is from EcoFlow? Hello and welcome! Today we're going to be checking out the River 3 Plus from EcoFlow, in particular looking at how it performs as a UPS, or Uninterruptible Power Supply. Now, some of you are probably thinking, wait a minute, EcoFlow don't make UPSs, they make power stations. Isn't that just a power station? Well, yes, it is a power station, but it is also a new breed of product which combines all the functionality of a power station with a full-fledged UPS. Now, some of you may also be thinking, well, what is the difference? And that is something we plan on covering in today's video. We're also going to look at why I chose this particular unit, and of course we're going to be doing some testing. So, there's a lot to cover, so I'm going to place the chapters up here and also on the video timeline. But before we get started, very important to emphasize this video is not sponsored, paid for, or influenced in any way. I purchased my River 3 Plus with my own money, and the opinions are entirely my own. And of course, if you enjoy the video today, please remember to give us a like, and also consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. So, let's get on with it. So at first glance, a power station and a UPS seem to be very similar devices, right? They both have rechargeable batteries, and they both have an inverter which takes the battery's DC power, converts it to AC in order to power your devices. But that's pretty much where the similarity ends, because these devices have been designed for very different purposes. A power station has been designed to provide on-demand power to various devices in various locations where there is no power available. Whereas a UPS has been designed to provide uninterrupted power to one or more specific devices in one location when power is not available. So being designed for different purposes means these devices are actually quite different on the inside. In the case of a power station, it needs to provide as much power as possible while staying portable, and a power station will probably be used a lot more frequently than a UPS. So for those reasons, power stations typically run off lithium batteries, which give you much higher capacity per unit weight than lead-acid batteries. The general rule of thumb is twice the capacity for half the weight. And also, lithium batteries have a much longer expected lifetime and can be charged and discharged many more times than lead-acid batteries. On the downside, lithium batteries are more expensive than lead-acid batteries, and they do require complex battery management systems to ensure they are charged and discharged correctly. Now, if we compare that to the UPS, because a UPS generally sits in one location, does not have to be carried around, and also because it gets used actually quite rarely, manufacturers of UPSs typically equip them with less expensive lead-acid batteries. Now, there is another key difference between a typical power station and a typical UPS, and it has to do with how power is managed. Now, with a typical power station, when you plug something in and power it, it is drawing power from the battery. Even if you were to plug the power station into AC power, it is still drawing power only from the battery. Now, a good power station will also support what is called pass-through charging, which means that you can power devices from your battery while simultaneously charging your battery. But this is only possible because we're using lithium batteries. A typical UPS with a lead-acid battery has to use a different strategy. Now, the normal situation for a UPS is that you have AC power flowing. And in this situation, power flows directly through the UPS to the devices without going through the battery. What happens in the event of a power outage is that the internal circuitry flips a switch, now powering the devices from the battery, and this switching takes place in a fraction of a second, actually less than 10 milliseconds, so the devices don't even sense that there has been a power outage, hence uninterruptible power supply. 
So I would say trying to use a UPS as a power station doesn't make a lot of sense. It has a lead acid battery and it makes it very heavy with limited capacity, pound for pound about one fourth of what you'd have with an equivalent lithium based system. And then of course there's the issue of limited charging cycles. But what about the other way around? If my power station supports the pass through function, surely I can take that and use it exactly like a UPS. As long as the power is flowing, my devices are pulling power from the battery while it is simultaneously being charged. And in the event of a power outage, obviously my devices continue to pull power from the battery, so I basically have an uninterrupted power supply. But unfortunately, there are some reasons why this is just not a good idea. Firstly, charging and discharging a battery are not 100% efficient tasks. In real world situations, probably more like 90%. And that's 90% charging, 90% discharging. So basically for every 100 watts you supply to your power station, you're only getting around about 80 watts out. Now, if we're using it as a UPS, a UPS doesn't typically handle very high power devices. So overall, the few extra dollars that's going to cost you over the course of a year probably isn't that much. But there is a second and much more important problem, and that is continuously charging and discharging a battery. Yes, even a lithium battery is just not good for the battery's health. If used consistently in this configuration, it will drastically reduce the lifetime of the battery, may even damage the battery, and in rare situations could even result in hazardous situations. So it's just not a good long-term solution. So you're probably wondering why then would I want to use the River 3 Plus as a UPS? Well, quite simply, EcoFlow have created a new breed of device which combines all the functionality of a power station, but also incorporates that traditional UPS switching circuitry. When the River 3 Plus is plugged in and used like a UPS, the power runs directly through it, bypassing the battery, and only in the case of a power outage does it switch over just like a traditional UPS in less than 10 milliseconds to its lithium battery. And of course, being a lithium battery means it's going to power those devices for significantly longer than a traditional lead acid based UPS. So over the years, I have purchased several UPSs, all lead acid battery based, including this one from Triplite. And the thing that has annoyed me the most is constantly having to buy replacement batteries, which I've done for this one on numerous occasions. Now, if you buy the original manufacturer's battery, that can be very expensive, often almost as expensive as the UPS itself. But of course, there are also aftermarket batteries which are significantly less expensive, but the added cost is only the beginning of the problem. The bigger problem I have is the time that I realize that I need a new battery is always when the power goes out and my UPS dies after just two minutes. So after a while, you realize that the sense of security that this thing gives you is often just an illusion, and all too often it doesn't deliver when I need it to. So you have to wonder, why do I even have this thing? So when I started shopping around for a new UPS, I decided no more lead acid, I want to have a UPS which is based on a lithium battery. And I was actually shocked to find just how few lithium based UPSs there are on the market. In fact, as far as I could find, none of the major UPS manufacturers offers a lithium based UPS, at least not at an affordable consumer grade level. Now, I did come across a couple of lithium UPSs from brands that I was not familiar with. They may be great products, but fortunately, I also found the River 3 Plus from EcoFlow. Now, EcoFlow is a company I am familiar with. I have purchased several of their products over the years, including some of their larger Delta series power stations, and I've always been very satisfied with the performance. So basically, this made my decision very easy. And when you compare the features, capabilities, and specifications of the River 3 Plus against a typical lead acid based UPS like this one, it really is a no brainer. The capacity of the River 3 Plus is about three times that of my old lead acid based UPS, even though it only weighs about two thirds of the weight. It can be charged from zero to 100% in just one hour versus up to eight hours on my old system. 
And whereas on my old system the battery could handle about two to three hundred charging cycles before it was basically useless, with the River 3 Plus it can handle 3,000 charging cycles and it will still be at 80% of its original capacity. Other advantages include a very useful display which shows you the status of the battery, what is currently going into and out of the battery, and an estimated of your available runtime. Also, the River 3 Plus is fully integrated into the EcoFlow app, which gives you even more detail about the status of your UPS, and even allows you to set up alerts, for example, when the battery goes below a certain level. Now, there are a couple of negatives to the River 3 Plus that I should mention. Firstly, there are only three AC outlets on the River 3 Plus, two on the back and one on the front. Now, typically on a UPS, you do find more outlets, which of course is somewhat ironic given the limited battery capacity, but nonetheless on the River 3 Plus, if you want to add more than three devices, you will have to add a power strip. Secondly, a common function of most UPS is when powering a PC, they have a USB connection and a dedicated app, which for example, when the power goes out, can initiate a controlled shutdown of the PC. Now the River 3 Plus also has this same functionality, but at the time of posting this video, the PC app is not currently available for download. Hopefully EcoFlow can make that available very soon. So here is my test setup. I have my Mac Mini and one of my two monitors plugged into the River 3 Plus. Now for the purposes of this test, I've actually turned the other monitor off completely. Otherwise, when the power goes out, this is sensed by the Mac Mini and it has to readjust to the single monitor and this will flicker and basically ruin the demonstration. Now, in order to have a more effective demonstration, rather than just have the computer idle, I've actually started a process going here. So this is a video project that I'm currently rendering. So basically I've finished doing my editing and I'm producing the final video file. Obviously this is a very sensitive process and we don't want to interrupt it. So in order to follow along with our demonstration, you can check out what's happening, of course, on the monitor, as well as on the display of the River 3 Plus itself. But I'm also going to use the EcoFlow app and I'll share that on the screen here so you can see exactly what I am seeing. So currently, as you can see, the battery is at 100%. My Mac Mini, as well as the monitor, together are pulling around about 70 watts, which you can see is being supplied from AC power. So I guess now all we have to do is wait for the power to go out. Oh, that was convenient. Okay, so the power has now gone out. You can see in the app, we are continuing to provide that 70 watts to the Mac Mini and the monitor. I didn't notice any flickering on the monitor, and as you can see, my video rendering is continuing uninterrupted. Also, looking at the app, you can see it is telling me, based on the current draw, that I've got around about four hours before I'm out of power on the River 3 Plus. Now for this particular project, that's more than enough, but let's say this was a longer project, maybe an upload of a very large video. In that case, what I might want to do is actually turn off the monitor. And when I turn off the monitor, you can see that it's drawing now just around about 15 watts. And you can see that we have a lot more time available at the current draw before my River 3 Plus is going to run out of power. And of course, anytime I want to check on the progress, I can simply power on my monitor. You can see the wattage increase once again. But as you can see, I have more than enough power available for this process to complete and shut down the computer. And of course, when the power comes back on again, you can see that my River 3 Plus starts charging, so the input power obviously increases significantly with that. And of course, it continues to power my Mac Mini and my monitor and continues uninterrupted with its current process.
Well, so far so good. Obviously it is early days, I've only just installed it, but so far it's performed as expected. It will be interesting to see how it does over the long term, and I definitely plan on posting an update as I get more experience with the River 3 Plus. And one last thing to talk about is the pricing. Now, at a list price of almost $300, the River 3 Plus is definitely at the high end, but you do get a lot for your money. And currently it is also available at an introductory price of just over $200. Now at this price, it is a real bargain. How long it will stay at this price and what the final price will settle out at remains to be seen, but right now it is a very attractive deal. So that wraps it up for another video. I hope you got good information out of it. If so, please remember to give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. If you have any questions, any comments, suggestions for future videos, please drop those into the comments section. Otherwise, thanks for watching.